Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Are you a network marketing professional? Are you looking to get crystal clear on your goals and what you have to do to achieve them? If the answer is yes, keep listening. My friends over at 90 Day Habits created a journal specifically for network marketers. It is the exact blueprint they use to reach the top 1% in their network marketing company. This 90 Day Habits journal will help you stay intentional, organized, and build habits to keep you on track toward your business goals. I use this journal. I love the creators of this journal. I love the energy around it. And I love the results it brings to my daily organization. Leaders make quick decisions. Then they make the right decision. Make the decision to commit to your business today with the 90 Day Habits Journal available at 90day90dayhabits.co, 90dayhabits.co, and use Level Up 15, all capital, for 15% off your order. Hello, my Level Up family. I am extra excited to be here with you guys today. You know, well, first of all, we're, we're about to, we're not recording this in real time. We have blown past our 2 million downloads. And I'm so excited because we've just recently started putting and inviting guests on our show. And I have somebody really, really special for y'all today. In fact, we've been touching base for a bit. And I've been attempting and inviting Amberly on the show for a while, but we just not have been able to connect. But I always believe in divine timing and perfect timing. And today is the day that you are meant to hear her story. Today is the day that she is meant to share her heart with all of you. So a little bit about Amberly, and she's going to share her story. So I've been following her on social media for a bit now. She is a motivational speaker. She's a podcast host. Host. She is a mindset coach. Correct me if I'm wrong. She is an, an, all about nutrition and big time about resilience. And I'll let her really share her story. But I want to really thank you so much, Amberly, for being here today. We're going to talk about all things resilience. I'm a. I'm such a big believer in resilience. I believe that we have a story and I believe our power and our purpose are found in our most challenging times in our lives. And life has happened to everyone, everyone. And there's no such thing as a perfect life with no obstacles and no heartache and no pain. And that doesn't exist. And every now and then when I've thought in my life, oh, that would be great. It really wouldn't be great because I think of my journey and where I am today. And it's, it is those def- defining moments that I really didn't know how I was going to get up. And that's the reason why I am where I am today. We all spend so much time in valleys, but when we're in a valley, when we go through things and experience things, a challenging time, we always have a choice. And you guys know me, we, we always have a choice and we can build resentment or we can bid, build resilience. And you, Amberly, are such a true testament to resilience. And your life could have had such a different story than where you are today. And what I'm seeing as one of your viewers and listeners is that you've used your pain to serve. And that's all about leadership, to serve, to make a difference in the lives of others, and to plant this seed inside of people that they can be and do any single thing they desire in this world because we are overcomers. And so with that, I'm so excited to turn it over to you. And I would love for you to start with your story, what you would love our listeners. Our listeners say my my podcast is titled Level Up with Debbie Neal. So it's all about mindset and obstacles and growing through adversity. And my purpose on this planet is to, to tap into potential. Get inside the hearts and souls of others to help them realize their God-given potential. And you are just a perfect host to have on here to serve our listeners in such a major way. So thank you for being here today. And I'm so excited for you to share your story. Oh, Debbie, I adore you. And we have been 
friends on social media for a long, long time and to finally get to talk to you. I, I mean, it's, it's an honor to be here and to get to share with your amazing audience who loves you. And, and I know why they love you. It's because of your big heart and your energy and that you're such a giver and you share all the knowledge so others can level up their life. And so thank you for having me. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, I think we all have a superpower within us. And so the other day I asked my husband, I was like, honey, what do you think my superpower is? And he's like, oh, you just won't die. <laughs> I'm like, I think that's called resilience. I think that's a better way of putting it. And, you know, I, I, my intention today is to really share with all your listeners ways to overcome adversity because there are definitely ways to get through challenges. There are definitely ways to build your resilience. And I only know so much about resilience because I have failed. I have falled. I, I've hit rock bottom um, more than once. And I always find a way to get back up and to bounce forward. I think that resilience is not bouncing back, but it's the ability to, to really have the courage to move forward and find a life of joy. And so, you know, my life was completely different um, 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago, I was in the fitness industry. I was sponsored by Nike. I was doing infomercials with Body by Jake. I was in Shape Magazine. I was teaching other trainers how to get certified and become trainers. And um, I employed several other trainers for my business. It was, I thought life is good. You know, I've got two healthy children, a husband that I love and everything changed in the blink of an eye. I was coming home from work on my motorcycle. It was a holiday weekend and I'm just cruising along down Ventura Boulevard and I see this SUV and I think he sees me, but I would realize very quickly he didn't. He shot out of the parking lot and um, I thought, I can't believe this is happening. And the, I, I remember just letting go of the clutch and trying to jump off my bike and I was T-boned. I was thrown 30 feet and just sliding across the asphalt, not knowing what I was going to, you know, if another car was going to hit me or what, how far I was going to slide. And I remember stopping and looking down at my leg because there was immediate pain, pain like I had never experienced before. And I looked down at my leg and it was just crumbled into pieces. Um, my foot was dangling off. There was blood everywhere. And Debbie, in that moment, I remember thinking I, I, I needed to call 911, but I did not want to let go of my leg because I was afraid it was going to fall off my body. And thank God I had a guardian angel. This man came over, ripped off his belt, and he made a tourniquet around my leg. And he really saved my life because I didn't realize this because my femoral artery was actually severed. So I was bleeding out into the street. Paramedics were right down the street at the coffee bean. So they, they heard the accident. They were running towards me before they even got the call. I was rushed to the hospital and put into induced coma because my I'd lost so much blood. My organs were shutting down and they couldn't control the pain. A little over a week later, I woke out, up out of a coma, and that's when I learned I had a 1% chance of saving my leg from amputation. And so in that moment, learning that I had a 1% chance, I thought, well, so there's still a chance. We need to find a doctor who's willing to take that chance with me. It took an act of God. It took so much grit. It was so painful. I ended up having 34 surgeries to save my leg and piece by piece put it back together. Um, I got out of the hospital and I thought, well, the worst is over. I, I'm going to be able to recover. I'm just going to work hard. I've got grit. I can do this. And um, went in for a doctor's appointment and that's when my healing journey really began emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally, in every way, because I was diagnosed with this incurable nerve disease called complex regional pain syndrome. And the doctor took one look at me and he's like, are you the kind of person who likes to push through pain? And I was like, well, yes, sir, I am. I was kind of proud, like, wow, he can tell I've got a PhD and suck it up. And then he said, well, you need to stop. You need to stop right now. You've got something very serious. Your life is never going to be the same. You're going to be permanently disabled. 
you need to go home and get back in your wheelchair. And I said, well, for how long? And he said, forever. He goes, you don't understand. You have a disease that there's no known cure for. You're going to have to stay in your wheelchair and, and you'll probably have to wear orthopedic shoes. And in that moment, I was like, orthopedic shoes? Like, no, I'm going to wear high heels again. Like That's what the things that go through your mind. Well, I felt like it was a kick in the gut. And I, I remember crying all the way home and being in my hospital bed that we had set up in our living room because I couldn't go up and down the stairs and thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to get through the pain? What am I going to do for work? We had $2.9 million worth of medical expenses in a lien on our house, and I was out of work. I was the main breadwinner. And in that moment, I heard this little voice, and it was my daughter, and she was upstairs, and she all she said was, Mama. And in that moment, I thought, I know why I need to get through this. I am going to be an example of resilience for my daughters. And in that moment, I thought, I'm asking myself the wrong questions. And you see, when we ask ourselves how and what we're in our head, but when we ask ourselves why, it activates the human spirit. It puts us in our heart. And the human spirit is powerful beyond measure. And so I know a lot of you listening are probably like, well, I've never been hit by an SUV, but, and I, God forbid, I hope no one ever has to experience that. But like you kind of mentioned earlier, we all go through challenges. We have all been hit by something, whether it's our finances or our relationships or our health, but we've all been through something. And what I've learned through having to dig myself up, having to learn to walk again, having to completely reinvent myself, having to learn to love and accept all the scars because I'm deformed and scarred up from the hip down um, and reinvent my career. And, you know, six years ago, I didn't even own a computer. My whole business was on the gym floor. And so to be sitting here with you today with a best selling book, when I didn't own a computer to be, have the honor to get to be on your show and learn to use technology and a mic and, and all these things that I get to do, I'm sharing that not to pat myself on the back, but I'm sharing that because if you are struggling right now, I was in that place where I was in, I was actually in a place where I, my pain led me to addiction and I did not want to live anymore, but I was too afraid to die. And I just had this little bit of light left in, in me. It was a little flicker of light. And I think we all have that light within us and we have to find ways to keep that light shining bright because energy is everything and everything is energy. So that's a little bit about my story and all the things that I can share with you. I'm so happy to share like the things that I've learned through just having to climb out of that darkness and to get to be sitting here with you today. Well, your story, and, and I've known your story because I've read about your story and it's pinned on the top of your your Instagram as well, but I have to say it gives me chills and I'm, and I'm very grateful that you shared it with, with my audience. And so you mentioned the word why, and this is my belief. When our, when our why is big enough, we, the how it appears. And when we focus in life on the how, the how, the how, the how, it's almost like looking at life through a straw. You're looking at your business or your life through this tiny little straw because the how is so small, but when the why is big enough. A lot of times when we're unmotivated, which is a whole different topic, it's because our why is not clear. So we become really lost. So a little bit about me, which I don't, this podcast is not about me, but it just really made me connect. And a lot of my viewers know this, but I went through something at 21 years old. I was not hit by a motorcycle, but just like you said, we're all hit by something. And the pain and darkness in my life led me to a hospital room. After being there for a few days, if not a week, a doctor came in after 24 hours of me being there and said, you are, I'm sorry to break this news to you, but you're never going to be a mama. You're never going to be a mom. Like you've, that what you've gone through, you should be lucky that you're alive, but you're never going to be a mom. And I remember my, in, my initial reaction was defeat. My initial reaction was, these are words of a doctor. So of course the doctor knows more than me. But after 24 hours, I realized, no, he gave me a diagnosis. He gave me an opinion. He doesn't mm -hmm. know my mind. He doesn't know my heart. Yep. He doesn't know my spirit. 
And although as that day, that, that circumstance seemed so defining, I wouldn't be who I am today without that moment. So I am a mom of four, four oh. kids that are my life. They are my world. They are my why. And that I believe that God was, it didn't seem like a wink at the time, but it was a wink saying you were destined for something so much more. So I'm going to bring you through this. You're going to come out on the other end, but you're going to discover the gifts that you can serve the world with. But I'm going to give you a little bit of test along the way. So I really thank you for sharing your story because your story now is serving so many people. And when we think of the word resilience, like our circumstances don't define us, how we grow through them, how we expand through them, how we weather the storm and use the storm to become who we are meant to be in this world and to figure out a way to make a difference in the lives of others and serve others. And most of all, give people light and hope, I believe is the greatest gift you could bring to the world. So you're doing that in such a beautiful way. So one of the things I'd love to talk about with resilience, because so many of my listeners are, it's, we have all different listeners, but a lot of people are looking for that success. They're looking to level up their life. They have really big dreams. But I believe that one of the biggest secrets to tapping into your superpower, to thrive, to, to become who you are meant to be in this world is to build your re resilience. It's to build your resilience, to keep in, in those those learning periods keep us expanding, right? Keep it's that vision through the resilience. So how can people expand and grow their resilience? Because it's not just something like, oh, I think I'm just going to be more resilient today. Like there's things that go into it when things happen and you're kind of building up that resilience. Uh, yes, that's such a great question. And, you know, I think we need to work and strengthen our resilience before we need it. And from all that you just shared, I mean, that's so beautiful, uh, a mama of four, that I was told that my husband and I couldn't have a baby and I got pregnant too. So I understand like she's my little angel, like my gift from God, I feel like. And, you know, I think first of all, one, we always have a choice. And once you realize you have a choice, then you take your power back but in order to be resilient, I really think it starts with this one thing. And this may seem so simple, but it was actually really, really hard for me, um, is to take radical, radical acceptance of where you are and who you are. Take the blinders off and take a good, hard look at your life at what is going on, at the habits you've created, um, of maybe what you're in denial about. And I say that because I was in denial about being diagnosed with this disease. And I was trying to just be like, screw that. He does not know what he's talking about. I went to another doctor and he said, nope, you've got this disease. I was like, oh, screw him. He doesn't know my mindset. I, that can't be my life. Third doctor said, yes, this is what's going on and you have to take, you need to take some action on this and, and start radical treatments. And I just broke down in tears and it took me, I'm, I'm not, it took me almost two years to get into acceptance for this nerve disease, acceptance for all the scars and to look at them as all the, the battles I had won and all the things I'd overcome instead of looking at them with disgust. I, I hated my leg. I hated myself. And it took some radical acceptance from, uh, and I'll just tell you one of the hardest things was I went from being this fitness person who was just always focused on career and, and my family and being healthy and vibrant to all of a sudden I became a full blown alcoholic. I was drinking every day, trying to stuff down the pain, trying to numb out the pain, trying to just pretend like everything was okay. I was in denial and pain demands to be heard. And what we let rise to the surface, what we, you know, reveal, we heal. And, you know, there's the saying, the truth will set you free. It will set you free. Radical acceptance will set you free. It might kick your ass a little bit, but it will set you free. And so it was when I took a good, hard look at my life and was in radical acceptances of, okay, well, 
this is where I am. Um, this, these are the cards I have been dealt. It puts you back in the driver's seat. It gives you the power to then take action with grit. And I think that being an acceptance allows you to take the right next steps one day at a time, one step at a time. It allowed me to get sober. I got sober back in 2016 and I changed my life. But also I had a lot of misconceptions about grit. You know, I think a lot of times I thought anyway that resilience was like, well, you just got to work harder. You just have to do more. You just have to focus more. You just have to post on Instagram more. You just have to be there more. And it's like, hustle, hustle, hustle. And I learned the hard way that that's not what resilience is. That's not what grit is. I mean, I mistook health scares for heroic acts. I mistook fear for function. Um, there were so many things I mistook. And here is, is what real resilience is. It's when you have grit with connection. That is where you find resilience. Now, Grit, working hard, getting up, deciding to move, developing those healthy habits. It's when you tap into your, your passion and your perseverance, but that leads to burnout or hitting walls. It feels like, you know, climbing your way to the top uh, or going through quicksand. But when you add connection, yeah, you're strong alone, but when you add connection and community, we're unstoppable. And look, I tried to do it alone. I tried being resilient by myself and I, I did hit rock bottom. That, that's what led me to addiction. And I think the opposite of addiction is connection. And so when you have a community, like I know you have this amazing community and when you have this community, I think that that is maybe the important most important thing I have about, I have an acronym that I've developed and I'll share that with your list, you and your listeners. Um, and community is a big part of that acronym. Um, I think when we come together, uh, we can lean on each other. We can support each other, especially as entrepreneurs. You don't have to do it alone. And that's something that has pulled me through so much is just knowing that there are others that are going through the same thing as me. I thought nobody is going to understand the pain that I have, or nobody is going to understand how I was this successful person. And now I'm an addict or alcoholic. Nobody's going to understand this nerve disease. Well, there is somebody out there that's going through something almost identical. And when you share that, it divides your pain. It gives you hope to keep moving forward. And, you know, the acronym I have um, for building your resilience is PACER. I did a TED talk on this and it stands for perspective, acceptance, community, endurance, and rest. And when you tap into all of these things, uh, like if you're going through the day and you're just exhausted or you're on the edge of burnout or you're sad or you're anxious, I walk through these five things every single day still to this day because I still live with constant pain. That is what allows me to get through the pain. That's what allows me to get through the anxiety. It allows me to get through any sadness or despair. And um, I'm happy to walk through that if you'd like me to walk through that. But I just want to be really, you know, uh, uh, respectful of your time and your listeners' time as well. I would love you to walk through that. You know, one of the things I just thought of when you mentioned resilience, and I couldn't agree more. Like that, I when I look back on my journey, there's been so many times where I've spent time in a valley. And I think most people do. And probably my most recent one was 2020, the summer of 2020. And I spent three dark months in what appeared like a, it felt like a very painful valley. And my immediate reaction was claw back out, do what you do best, work, hit the pavement, do all those things. Because I am, I am, I'm a little bit competitive. I, I love to succeed. <laughs> I'm very driven. And if you tell me something can't be done, I'm going to do it 10 times and I'm gonna do it, you know, and I'm going to do it multiple times on Sunday. And so, but when I was growing through this, it was like, you know what, Deb, you need to rest. You need to find what is the purpose of this? What is the purpose of the pain? What are the lessons in the pain? Because sometimes we look at the thing. But it's not always the thing. And if we just push through the thing, we're not going to find the gift in we're supposed to not only come out, 
but come out better, come out different. And different is not always a bad thing because the only constant is change. And so I could remember in the summer of 2020, and I'm a big believer in a morning ritual, maybe we'll have time for that, but it was, you know, praying and focusing on gratitude and, and, thanking God for where I was and thanking him for showing me, you know, the, the key to growing out of this period of time with, with, um, and building that resilience. So I totally agree that it's not just about pushing, 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 because if we push in, we're going to be get exhausted. And I do feel very, very blessed because I do have an incredible community with actually this podcast was born after the summer of 2020. It first came out in March of 2021, but it was the idea of it was birthed. And I don't know if you remember, but you and I had a phone conversation years back. It was probably four or five years at this point. And I did ask you questions about a podcast. So I'm, I'm super proud of where we've come to today. But before I even get into my next question, if you do want to expand on what you were just talking about, because I feel like your acronym is every single word of it is so powerful. And I do have so many listeners, you know, a lot of them are entrepreneurs. I'm in a bit, I'm in a business that's amazing because you don't have a boss, but the unfortunate thing is that you don't have a boss. It's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to go through an optical and think that's a sign. Maybe this is not meant to be, or it's so easy to put your success on the back burner because something happened, whether it's a big thing or a little thing, but we just get so easily distracted. And if we could just bring ourselves back to an, an acronym or just that focus, knowing that we are meant to be more and we don't, we can live life, but not also put everything on the back burner. Yeah, well, yeah. And I think as an entrepreneur, it's easy to do, right? You can get in your own little bubble of, I just have to do this all by myself. I have to just keep going. I have to keep pushing. And, um, I've learned like I, I do so much better. And that's the reason I, I started my mastermind for women is so you don't have to go through struggles as an entrepreneur alone. You have a community behind you to offer support and guidance, but yeah, um, with the acronym that came about because we were sitting at the dinner table. My husband looked at me and I guess I looked pretty ragged and tired. And he goes, you really need to pace yourself. And I feel like Debbie, you might, you might have this same kind of personality as me where you're like, don't tell me to calm down and don't tell me to pace myself. Cause I'm going full force. And so as an entrepreneur, that's a pretty touchy subject. I was a little offended when he said, pace yourself. And I was like, I am pacing myself. And I got out a dinner napkin and I started writing down everything I did in order to get through the day. That day I had given a motivational talk. I had trained clients. Um, I was doing homework. We had homework paper scattered all over the table that my daughter had um, and dinner. And I had my leg propped up on the table because it was swollen and throbbing from pain. And in that moment, I wrote down, first I wrote down pace, and then I had to add the end because resting is really hard. But what I do every single day, the first part of pacer being perspective is constantly I'm having to shift my perspective because I can easily go, oh gosh, you know what? I'm limping today. Maybe I should just rest. Maybe I shouldn't go to the gym. Maybe I'm just not good enough to go stand on that stage. Who am I? Like, And the, the quickest and easiest way to shift your perspective is with gratitude. So I love that you mentioned that. I mean, gratitude is alchemy. It turns what you don't have into what you do have and what you can't do into what you can do. And it's something I use every single day. I actually have a gratitude practice and I say practice because some days are a little harder than others. And so I have a group of ladies, we call ourselves the God Squad and we use an app called um, My Spiritual, is it My Spiritual Toolkit? Um, it's a, a recovery app, but you don't have to be recover in re, a, a recovery program to use it. I use it for, it's got daily readings and prayers, and it also has a little section where it's tools. And we write down 10 things we're grateful for, and we share it with our, our group because it's one thing to feel grateful. It's another thing to write it, another thing to share it. And when you get to read what somebody else is grateful for, Oh my goodness. The other day, one of my sober sisters was like, I'm grateful this was the last day of my chemo treatment. And I was like, huh. And I was worried that my website was down. Like it's not cancer. You know what I mean? And so gratitude is something that I use every day. It's our ability to shift our perspective 
allows us to see our circumstances in a completely different way. And then acceptance, which I've already talked about, was really hard for me. But so I, I encourage every single you listening who maybe you're in a tough spot, I encourage you to think of one thing that you need to accept today. Maybe that's your relationship. Maybe that's your financial situation. Maybe it's that you're binging on cookies too much, or now you've downloaded the Threads app and you're binging on social media more. But what is it that you need to accept so you can start to take radical action? And when I was in acceptance for this nerve disease, it doesn't mean I'm I'm admitting defeat. It means I am like stepping into my power and able to take action And it means I've been able to develop better habits, change my eating, change my workouts, change how I do my morning ritual. And it led me to a community of people, um, of passionate entrepreneurs of, uh, and that's the next part of community is the next part of Pacer. And again, you know, yes, we're all strong, but man, when you get with a community of like-minded people, it's powerful. But I encourage every one of you listening to really look at your community. And like I said earlier, energy is everything and everything is energy. And you're going to have people in your life that are takers, that they're energy vampires. And you're going to have people in your life that are, that are givers. You just love to be around them, that you, you feel that even exchange of energy that you're uplifted and it doesn't have to even be directly in your life. It can be someone on social media. So when you're scrolling, sometimes, you know, you might have people that for some reason, it's nothing that they're doing to you personally, but maybe they don't lift you up. Maybe they're like, they make you get in that comparison mode or you're just they don't inspire you. And I always say stick with the puppy uppers and get rid of the doggy downers. And sometimes even on social media, we got to bless them and block them and move on. You got to do what's best for you and really develop the community. Um, and, and there's a saying, you know, there, who are the five people around you? Because if you're around five wealthy people, you're the sixth person person that's going to be wealthy. If you're around five people that are overeating and eating crappy, you're going to be the sixth person who's starting to grab one of their French fries off of their plate. Do you know what I mean? And then the next part of Pacer is endurance. And that is where your passion and your perseverance come into play. That's where when you start to feel like, oh my goodness, I don't know, this is kind of hard. You ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? You know, my husband has told me, he's like, Amberly, you don't have to do all this. Why are you doing so much? And I said, you know, when I can serve people, that turns the pain that I have into purpose. That gives me the motivation and the inspiration to keep going when I can be of service. Being of service is what pulled me out of my depression when I lay in the hospital bed, you know, and people go, well, how could you be in service while you were laying in the hospital bed? I was making phone calls to other people. I was setting up nutrition plans for clients. I was setting up clients with other trainers, taking care of my trainers. I was even giving the nurses exercise tips on how to get a better booty when they found out I was a fitness instructor. And so I love endurance. I love the grit. I love that, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of stubbornness to just keep going, but the rest part is so important. And that was so hard for me, but without rest, you can't be resilient. I mean, if you really, really want to be resilient, you have to strategically plan times to stop refuel, recover. That means like, how much sleep are you getting? Are you resting in between Zoom calls? I even wear a ring that monitors what type of sleep that I'm giving. And I've made sleeping and resting and recovering part of my business strategy. And when you are rested, you're going to be able to spark creativity. You're going to be able to serve your, your, you know, clients or the people that you lead, or you're, you're going to be able to be a better mom. You're going to be able to be a better uh, partner, wife, husband. And so, um, pacer when I'm, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed or I'm like, why am I feeling this way? I walk through perspective, acceptance, community, endurance, and rest and say, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot left off that part, you know? 
Well, I'm so I'm so grateful that you shared that, and and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just ask like one more question. I know we went a little bit over, and I'm so grateful that you touched on gratitude because I believe it's the secret to everything. Like I believe it's the antidote. I believe it's the solution. I believe there's something to be. We're breathing, right? We have life inside of us, and so. And I'm also a very big believer of speaking into yourself. Too often we listen to ourselves, right? And a lot of times it's, you're not good enough. You're this. You're, there are stories that are not serving us and affirming your life. And just gratitude is everything. It has the power to change everything. So the other thing I wanted to just ask you quickly, because things rarely go in life as planned, right? So if we look at it as business, it rarely go as planned. So I just want to talk about resilience when it does come to goals, because goals are so important. But I'm also very big on growth versus the goal, right? Is always growing. And I can vividly remember for myself setting a goal to grow to the top of my industry that I'm currently in. And I set like monstrous goals. Like I looked at the goal and it actually scared me. And I think what scared me the most is I'm like, I'm actually not the Debbie Neal yet that can achieve that. So it's not only the number that's scaring me, but it's the process of what's going to happen. And so I mapped it out. I had a plan, but every single day I had to redo that plan because things were not falling into the place. It was the same month that my father-in-law at the time, he was put on hospice. He ended up passing away. And and at the time it could seem really insensitive to say, well, my goals were, were bigger than me, right? But I had to figure out a way to navigate. And during that, we do build resilience. So when it does come to goal setting, like so what's your advice? Because it doesn't always like, people have this mindset, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. And I don't mm-hmm. believe that. I, no, I, 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 I I'm, I'm with you that. all the way. <laughs> Named one of Oprah's favorite things in 2018, Cozy Earth's best-selling bamboo sheet set is temperature regulating and incredibly soft. Cozy Earth's bedding collection offers a variety of luxury pillows, sheets, blankets, and more. Cozy Earth's linen bedding collection adds a casual elegance to any space and captures the fabric's breezy, timeless appeal. They are so unbelievably soft, so unforgettably comfortable. CozyEarth.com products are made from responsibly sourced viscose from bamboo. Feels like heaven to the touch. At CozyEarth.com, you can explore their latest arrivals like new blankets, throws, expertly crafted from luxury fabrics like cashmere bamboo, ideal for year-round warmth and coziness available in a range of earthly neutrals. I just got my set and I absolutely love them. So Cozy Earth provide an exclusive offer for my listeners today, up to 35% off site-wide when you use the code Level Up. I mean, I'm all about, yeah, let's, let's believe it's meant to be and it's going to happen. But you, my grandfather always said, you got a shovel in your hand, you can lean on it and pray for a hole or you can start digging. Oh, I love that. And I'm big on prayer, but I know you got to dig. You got to start digging. You can't just wish for things. You've got to really do the work. And I love this question because so many people say, go, I have big lofty goals, goals as well, but I think it's really, really important to take things one day at a time. I'll have my husband ask me, he'll be like, well, uh, what's the plan for next week um, on this thing and that thing? And I'm like, honey, I got to focus on this day right now. I got to be right here in today and focus on getting through this day. And let me tell you something. If I wouldn't have set small attainable goals, I'd probably still be stuck in the hospital bed. If I would have thought while I was laying in the hospital bed and I couldn't even lift my leg up off of the bed, I couldn't stand up. I had a bedpan beside me that I had to use. If I would have thought about, well, I've, I've got to run that marathon again. I got to run another marathon. I probably wouldn't have never have gotten up. I would have been too overwhelmed. And so I set small attainable goals. And one of my first goals, and I'm hoping this isn't, you know, oversharing too much, but one of my first goals was actually to be able to use the bathroom on my own. And I knew that I was going to be able to to have to stand up on one leg out of the bed for seconds at a time. And it was so painful to stand up 
that I, I could only literally do it for one second and I would lay back in the bed and have to elevate my leg and I'd be in tears, tears rolling down my face. And I would set a goal, okay, next time I'm going to stand up for five seconds. And I knew that I was going to have to be able to use crutches for approximately maybe 30 to 45 seconds to get across the living room, down the hallway to the toilet where I could lift my leg up again. And so I set these small attainable goals and I would say one, one second, one, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. I, I would count. And literally each day I was able to stand up longer. And before long, I was able to use the bathroom on my own. My next goal was I wanted to be able to walk all the way down the street to the Starbucks and have coffee. And so these small attainable goals, they built my confidence along the way because they were, I set them and there was something that I could achieve. And then I would set something a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And I would just goal stack. I would stack all these goals up. So along the way, I was building my confidence. I was assuring myself that I was going to be able to get to the next one and the next one. And you know what, Debbie, I think a lot of times, especially on social media, things look easy. It just looks like, oh, wow, you're a best-selling author. Your podcast is top 1%. No, it was a marathon. And I knew going into being a podcast host, even that I was going to have this podcast. I was going to be every week, release an episode. I, I was going to slowly get more downloads. I wasn't going to have a bunch of sponsorships and uh, commercials and ads and all that. I was just going to give value and do the work every day, one week at a time. And slowly but surely, my podcast got to number no, number top 1% globally. And so I want people that took years. I want people to know that you just keep doing the work. You focus on your why, like you said, you surround yourself with passionate people, seek counsel, not opinion, surround yourself with people who have already done the thing that you want to do. And another thing, you know, I think it's really important when we talk about community, like I'm a coach and I have a coach. I have my own mastermind and I have invested in a mastermind. I'm a sponsor and I have a sponsee. And so don't do it alone. Go reach out for help from someone. It might be a coach. It might be a mentor. It might be a friend who has already achieved the things that you have done. And just remember to set those small attainable goals. And I, I love what you said earlier too, Debbie. You said, I, I always say, I have learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself because I'll be sitting in my office going, Oh my gosh, I just booked this huge gig. It's going to be in a stadium. I'm going to be standing in a stadium speaking. Are they sure they got the right person? Like, who am I to stand on that stage and blah, blah, blah. And then I have to go stop it, hush the inner critic, and learn to talk to myself and say, Amberly, you've worked hard every day. You've paid your dues. You are going to stand on that stage. It's not about you. It's about the people you serve. And then I'm like, okay. And then I reach out to a friend and talk to a friend. <laughs> well, you have been an incredible guest here. I, you know, life is, isn't about our circumstances. And I don't want to dismiss like what happened to you is not a circumstance, but it is in some way. Like we always have detours. You had big plans. You were in fitness. You were in Nike. You were, you know, a big time fitness instructor. You had fitness instructors under you. You had, you had a life, you had a plan. And all of a sudden- in a blink Gone. of an eye, in a blink of an eye, everything changed. But that power, that pain has been used to transform your mind, your body, certainly your spirit. And through that journey, you're attracting joy, you're giving joy, you're expanding and you're shining your light really, really bright. And you thank hit it on you. Oh, you're so Debbie, what you just said, do you know my next book? What is I wanted to, I want, I've had this on my heart is, uh, find joy for the journey. There you go. So thank you for saying that. Because it is, you, you, you found your joy. And when you find your joy, you can give your joy and think of how many times people get resentful. Like where you also, we also talked about God a few times. I'm a very big believer. I, I, to live my life like Jesus, to, to be able to, when my life is over saying, you know, good job, 
faithful servant. Like that's what I'm Amen. here. That's what I'm here for. But it is very easy when we go through things to be like, well, where was God that night? Like wh- why when I was T-boned, where was he? God always has a plan. He always has a plan. And well done, faithful servant, because you're making a difference in the lives of so many people. And so today has been an honor. I knew that we were meant to connect. Where can my listeners find you? Where can they find you on social? Where can they listen to you? How can they download your podcast? Because if you're Love and Level Up with Debbie Neal, you're definitely going to love True Grit and Grace. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what? I just, like I said, I adore you. Thank you for having me on. And I would love to give your listeners something special. I've, I just, I just had my, um, somebody help me, my web, my web guy. Cause I'm, that's not my forte. You not don't need not to explain the, that to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I would really love to be able to give my book to people that I really want to share with and I really, you know, admire. And so I'd love to give your audience my book. Um, it's called True Grit and Grace. And if you just go to amberlylago.com forward slash free book, you get a free download. You'll get my whole book. And so I've never given my book away for free until like now. I'm just giving it to your audience. Um, and then you can uh, reach me. I hang out on Instagram at Amberly Lago Motivation. And now apparently I'm on threads too. Are you on threads yet, Debbie? You know what? I'm embarrassed to say I haven't heard of it. I don't know what you're uh, talking Well, about. it just you know, came out. When you say threads, I think of thread up. A friend of mine once told me you send a bunch of your clothes in to thread up like stuff you're not using anymore. And then you get a gift card from Athleta. Maybe my stuff wasn't good because I got a gift card for $7 and 35 cents and it took me a day to pack it up. So if you look at opportunity costs, uh, you had me lost at threads, but now I know it's something new. Yes, it is Instagram's version of Twitter. And so I, I have to stay up to date on the latest stuff so I can share it with my mastermind ladies. But yeah, it's kind of like the, it's kind of a uh, Facebook's or Insta Meta's Meta, their version of Twitter. So we'll see. It's another app to get sucked into. But um, anyway, Amberly Lago Motivation on threads as well. Amberly Lago on LinkedIn and Amberly Lago Speaker on Facebook. And I, it's just been such an honor to be here. And um, thank you for letting me share with your incredible community. Thank you for being here today. Well, that's all today, my Level Up family. Wasn't today such an amazing gift? Amberly was incredible. Go follow her, watch her journey. Definitely listen to her book. When somebody that's so inspirational and shining so much light offers you a free book, listen to it because leaders are readers and we are always students and we're always growing and expanding. Love you, friends. Talk to you soon. 